Good evening. evening. Welcome to Lamb of God. Welcome to our third and final midweek Advent service. I'm so glad for those of you that have come to all of them. And was tonight, tonight, was our Advent dinner tonight not excellent? Beef stew, excellent? I think I really am. We're going to all have a siesta time. We're all going to take a little nap and then we'll come back and worship, okay? No, we're not going to do that. Anyway, it was good. Welcome all of you that are here. All of you that are watching at home on live stream, welcome. We're so glad that you have joined us. The Holy Spirit who is here among us now, really and truly present, is with you. And I pray he lifts you up and joins you with us and draws you closer to Christ. All of the help, uh, all of those that helped with the dinner, thank you very much. Uh, Susan, uh, Rita Jones, Betty Smith, Joyce and Tom Slayton, to mention a few. Tim could not be here. Tim's been in the hospital, Tim Hill. However, he was released and he's home this afternoon. So he is home right now. But those ladies came at the last minute and filled in and cooked and all that helped clean and set up. God bless you and thank you. You did an awesome job. Appreciate it very much and so does Tim. He sends his blessings and love to you as well. Updates on uh, one of our other members that was in the hospital. Donna Zanotti was in the hospital and then she was at Regency. I found out she is home as well. So praise the Lord and thank God. Prayers. Prayers being uh, happening on behalf of Tim and Donna. Next Sunday, can you believe coming up in just a few days? It is Christmas Eve. Oh my gosh. We will have two services on Christmas Eve. Since it's a Sunday, One service is at 10 a.m. I always like to have worship at 10 a.m. I like people to know no matter what Sunday it is, you can find worship here at Lamb of God at 10 a.m. So that'll be kind of our festival worship. The choir will be here and they will be singing Scarborough Carol. And it'll be a divine service with communion. And then our evening service will be at 7 p.m. It will also be a divine service. Our choir once again will be singing and they're going to sing Dona Nobis Pachem. Right, Linda? Well, actually, I looked it up. It can be Pachem or Pachem. Either way, they're going to sing it. And however they sing it, it'll be right. It's Latin for grant us peace. That'll be the choir piece. Also, in our 7 o'clock service, we'll have the candlelight reading of Jesus' birth story. We'll light candles. You will hold them. Pray you don't set anything on fire. Haven't yet. Anyway, we read through Jesus' birth story and Luke interspersed with singing stanzas of Silent Night. I find it to be a very good way to to, uh, bring in Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I pray you can join us. Continuing on through Christmas Eve, uh, we have the Advent Challenge from the Ladies of the Lamb, our LWML. And uh, they are challenging the congregation to donate to the Franklin Avenue Mission Food Bank. And they will match whatever we come up with up to $200. So it's a great opportunity. I pray that uh, any and all of you that haven't done so can do that. I think the box is out there by where you get the bulletins and the narthex. You can drop a a donation in there. Also check out the memory tree in the fellowship hall. There's heart-shaped ornaments by that. The idea here is you write the name of a deceased loved one on one of those ornaments and hang it on the tree. It's a great way for us to remember the God's gift that was their life and also to say thank you to God for that gift. And to remember, when somebody passes, it's goodbye for now, but not forever. We all look forward to Resurrection Day when we will gather again around the Lord's table and celebrate that marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Tonight, we will be looking at uh, Genesis chapter 3 and the call of Moses by the Lord from that burning bush. And the title of the message is, The Great I Am Who Has Come to Seek and Save the Lost. As we gather, God's children, Israel, had been suffering under the heavy hand of slavery in Egypt for 400 years. They were crying out to the Lord to save them. The Lord had promised their forefather Abraham that his people would go into slavery, but that he would come and punish their captors and bring them out and into the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet 400 years was a long time to wait. Not all had remained faithful to worshiping the one true God, the Lord. Some had turned to the Egyptian gods 
while others had just lost their faith entirely. But the Lord is a God who keeps his promises. He made covenant promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's a God that will come and keep them. He is the I am who comes to seek and save the lost. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace. You can remain seated. You can stand, wave. I'm going to come down and shake hands with you. Let's share that peace of Christ with one another. God's peace. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Pass that down. <laughs> Here, Norma, I'll take. <laughs> God's peace, Rita. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Just pass that down to her. God's peace. God's peace, Linda. I have in my bulletin to stand, but you can remain seated for our opening hymn. It's uh, the advent of our King.
I would invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We responsively read a portion of Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hands of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my hope. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. I have been as a portent to many. My mouth is filled with your praise. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Spirit and the Church cry out. All those who await his appearance pray. The whole creation pleads. Awaiting the Son of Man and the Son of God, we implore. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson tonight comes from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire that was in the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning Yet it was not consumed. 
And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I also have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians have oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons... God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. I would invite you to stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small of stature. So he ran ahead, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry down and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, The half of my goods I give to the poor. 
And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Congregation may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon for this evening comes from our Old Testament lesson from Exodus chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, thereabouts, and I've entitled it, The Great I Am Comes to Seek and to Save. Well, it's almost Christmas. What does that mean for you? Looking forward to it, aren't you? I am. I'm looking forward to time with family. My brother might come down from up in Oscoda. We're going to gather at my daughter's house, and I expect all three of my children to be there with their assorted families, and just a great time. We'll open presents. We'll have dinner. We'll sit around, and hey, who knows? Maybe we'll watch the Lions win. That's actually on Saturday. They play on Saturday. Not a sure thing, though. But this year, if you're a Lions fan, you have at least a little bit of something to look forward to and to be excited about. Christmas comes, and Christmas goes. January comes. It's kind of the depression after that exciting trip. You go on a trip, and you get home, and you got to unpack, you got to do all the chores. Christmas comes and it goes, January hits, you got to take all that stuff down that you put up and put it away, take the tree down and put it away. It's dark outside, it's cold, maybe there's snow, maybe there's not. The Christmas parties are over, you're left with just yourself, except for those bills that come. All the bills for all the things that you spent are for Christmas. It could be kind of a depressing time. I mean, there's not really much else that goes on until spring comes. It's a long, hard time for many people. And as I said last Sunday, Christmas is good. It's those things that weigh us down, that darkness that comes upon us. Christmas can kind of relieve that for a time, but it's not permanent. 
And perhaps even after Christmas, those things that we pushed away in the celebration all come back down upon us. We've all got those things. You, me, our extended family, there's all things that are going on and we worry about them, we fret about them, we pray about them. We pray and certainly there are all those things that are relieved, but how many things in your or my life that we pray on and it just seems that God's not taking care of them the way I want him to and the way you want him to. Sometimes it can seem like he's maybe not listening at all. You have those things in your life, I know you do. And as for me, all I got to do is look down at my foot. Two years I've been praying, and I'm still wearing this boot. It can get hard to wait for him to answer sometimes, can't it? Think about how hard it was for the Israelites. The Israelites were the descendants of Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob. Remember we talked about Jacob last Wednesday, the usurper. God goes on to bless him. He has 12 sons. They have a family. One of them disappears. Jacob thinks he's dead. The brothers actually sold him into slavery and he goes down to Egypt. The rest kind of muddle along. There's a famine in Canaan where they're living. They hear that there's food in Egypt. So the rest of the brothers go down there. And you probably know the story. Who do they encounter? Their long lost brother Joseph who has forgiven them and impresses upon them that God has forgiven them. Their brother Joseph who is second in command over the powerful nation of Egypt. He takes his brothers in and their family. He gives them a place to stay in the land of Goshen, which is far away from the rest of the Egyptians, so they can stay safe and secure. He feeds them and provides for them. In this, he is the hand of God put there to protect them and to save them. Thus, the nation of Israel lives and flourishes. Lots of kids happen. Time goes by. Those rulers that were there for the way that Joseph saved the nation, they all die. And the ones that come to power forget. Forget about what Joseph did. Forget about that these were his people. They look in the land of Goshen, these Egyptians, and what do they see? They see these miserly, little, not little anymore, Israelites, growing and flourishing like a plague. They're dangerous. They're outsiders. They're not one of us. And on top of everything else, they take care of sheep. And Egyptians hate sheep. We've got to do something about them, the Pharaoh says. And he does. The Pharaohs, as you know from the History Channel, they have a desire to build. And here in the land of Goshen is cheap labor. Let's put them to work. There'll be labor for us. We won't have to pay for it. Our people won't have to sweat off their backs. And it'll be a way for Pharaoh to keep his thumb on them, to keep them oppressed, lest they think about rising up. The nation of Israel, who had been so blessed by God for around 400 years, finds themselves slaves. Lots of prayers said, Lord, where are you and when will you deliver us? But as time goes by, and as it happens to a lot of people, we forget. They forgot the promises that God gave to Isaac, to Jacob, and especially to Abraham. God had told Abraham, your descendants will travel to Egypt, they'll be enslaved for 400 years, but I will come and rescue them. Promise of God, but those years go by and they forgot. Some of them just stopped trusting in this God who had made so many promises. Obviously, he can't keep them. Others went so far as to look to the gods of Egypt to get their idols and to trust in them. People that really weren't worthy of God visiting or saving. Yet the Lord God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, He comes anyway. He is the God 
who comes to seek and to save. And who does he come to? I want to talk about somebody that's unworthy. Here's Moses. Who is Moses? Why is Moses out in, the, in Horeb, far away from the land of Egypt, across the Red Sea? Moses was living in the palace. He was an adoptive son of the Pharaoh. He had it made. Yet he never forgot that his people really were these Israelites who were being persecuted. He came across one of his fellow brothers who was especially being persecuted by an Egyptian slave master. He didn't think anybody was looking. He stepped in and killed the man. Then a little bit later, two Israelites are having an argument. Moses steps in and tries to stop it. One of them turns and says, what are you going to do, Moses? Kill us like you did that Egyptian? Moses discovered people knew about what he did. What if Pharaoh finds out? Moses takes off. Moses is a fugitive, a fugitive from Egypt, a fugitive from Pharaoh, living and and keeping sheep for his father-in-law in hiding. This is the man that God comes to. He's out searching for grass and pasture for the sheep, comes across this amazing sight. Here's a bush that's on fire, except it's not. There's fire contained in the bush, but it's not being consumed. Who would have imagined such a thing? Moses says, I got to check this out. He didn't just stumble across this by accident. The Lord God was coming to him to call him into his service. Moses, take off your shoes, for where you are standing is holy. This is holy ground. Why is it holy ground? Because the Lord God himself is really and truly present. His divine glory is somewhat cloaked in this fire, in this vision, but really and truly there. And he comes and he calls Moses to be his spokesman. He comes and reminds Moses of the promises that he gave. I am the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God who promised them that I would save them. I'm the God that told them this nation would be enslaved, but yet I would come and free them. I am the God who keeps my promises. I am the God that's here to do that. And you, Moses, are my man. Of course, knowing Moses' background, you know he's going to say, Who, me? You want me to go to Pharaoh? You know who I am? A fugitive? And I'm going to go and speak for you? God has an answer. I will be with you. And who is this I that will be with him? I am who I am. I am the one and only God that exists. All others are frauds. All others are fakes. All others that are worshipped by Egypt and other nations don't exist and can't help you. I am the creator. I created all things and I sustain all things. I created you. And I give life to all things. I am who I am. All reality finds its purpose finds its existence in me. I am the one who will be with you. And no one, but no one, will be able to stop you. He came and called to Moses. He came and worked through Moses to, let, to move Pharaoh, to let those people go all the while doing all kinds of miraculous signs to prove that each one of those Egyptian gods doesn't exist and can't help them because he controls all things. He's the one that worked through Moses so that after the final plague that killed all the firstborn of Egypt, Pharaoh's more than happy to let, the, let these Israelites go and to give them presents. Please get out of town. The I am promised to come and save And the I am always fulfills his promise. The Lord God, 
The Lord God that came to people that weren't worthy, certainly the Israelites weren't worthy of salvation, certainly Moses wasn't worthy of being called, but God doesn't care about that. He comes and he changes you. He changed the Israelites. He called them at Mount Sinai and made them his people and gave them his commandments and then gave them the sacrificial system to forgive them. He cleansed them. He restored them. He made them his people. He is the God who comes to seek and to save. He came then. came again, too. About 1,400 years later, he didn't come in a miraculous sign of a bush that seemed to be burning but wasn't. Actually, with human eyes, it was a lot more toned down. He came as a baby, a weak and helpless-looking baby, born not in a hospital, born not in a palace, but born surrounded by animals and placed in a feeding trough. Jesus is that I am. He is I am who I am, and he came and was born as a baby to seek and to save the lost. We see him doing that in our verses from uh, Luke chapter 19. Jesus is heading into Jericho, walking through. People might think, and the disciples are probably thinking that he's just on his way to Jerusalem. Maybe it was on his path. Maybe it wasn't. Then you've got Zacchaeus. Short man, but rich, powerful. He wants to see this rabbi. Maybe he's heard. Maybe he's heard about the things that this man has done. He doesn't really want to meet him. He just wants to see him. He's kind of like when we go to see a football game and we sit in the stands. We're fine to sit there and observe, but do you want to go down on the field and get hit by one of those linebackers? I certainly don't. He didn't want to get into the fray. He wasn't looking to be called to anything. He just wanted to see. Jesus is the great I am who came to do more than that. The sinful man, Zacchaeus, he came for him. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up. He could have just walked by. He he was probably looking down, but instead he looks up because he knows Zacchaeus is in that tree. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Why was Jesus walking down that road? To meet Zacchaeus and to have dinner at his house. Jesus already knew. Zacchaeus didn't, but now he does. Just as when Jesus called the other disciples, it's a life-changing experience. And it was for Zacchaeus. But people can't believe that Jesus would want to spend time with this man or that Jesus would want to bother with him or even that Jesus would even think him worthy of salvation. When they saw what Jesus was doing, they all grumbled. He's gone to be with a guest of a man who was a sinner. He's beyond the kingdom of God. Why are you bothering with him? Don't you know what this man is? He's gotten rich off the backs of his people. Gives the money to Rome, our enemies, and then keeps a ton of it for himself. He is not worthy. But that's not what Jesus saw. Certainly he wasn't worthy. None of the rest of the disciples were worthy. But Jesus is the great I am, the God who comes to seek and save the unworthy, to save the unlost, to save the lost, to save those who cannot save themselves. Jesus says to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He's worthy. Son of Abraham, not so much by blood, although he was that. Son of Abraham because he had now been given the faith of Abraham. The faith that trusts that this man is the Messiah. Same faith that's been given to you and given to me. You see that in Zacchaeus' actions. His heart was changed. Now he wants to make amends. Now he wants to give back all that he's taken that was wrong. Not to earn Jesus' favor. He's already got it. He had Jesus' favor before he said anything. Jesus came for him. 
But that faith created in his heart changed him. Jesus came to seek and to save him and grabbed a hold of him and gave him faith. That's why Jesus came. Not just for him, though. For you and for me. The baby that was born in a manger, the great I am. I am who I am. The God that's above all things, that created all things, now was coming down and inserting himself into creation, into humanity. In that baby born in the manger, something that had never, ever happened before, God intimately joined himself with mankind. Not to stay and leave, but to remain forever, joined with a man, Son of God, Son of Man, Jesus Christ. The great I am who came to seek and save not just one tax collector, although he saved a couple of them, not just the people of Israel, but the Gentiles, you and me. Because all who have that faith of Abraham, that trust in him as the Messiah, that we have not seen him, all that believe that his life and death and resurrection was for you, was for me. All those that believe he was our atoning sacrifice. To forgive all the ways that we look and say, Lord, why are you not helping me? Don't you ever care about me? That forget all that he's already done for us in our life. He came to be the atoning sacrifice to save every single one of those things. The baby that was born to go to the cross and give his life and then rise again so that we might know that that atoning sacrifice was sufficient in the Father's eyes to give us life with him now and eternal life to come. Jesus, the I am who I say I am, the great I am, who came to seek and save the lost. And continues to come. Certainly he rose again and is at the Father's right hand side, but he continues to come through the means of grace. Came to you in your baptism. Brought all that he had earned on the cross and poured it into your heart and your life. Made his death and resurrection for you and for me. And then to just go away and leave you, he remains with you. Hear now as I preach these words to you. Hear when we read his gospel lesson and the words of scripture and certainly when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Really and truly hear. Cloaked as he was when he came to Moses. Cloaked in humanity when he walked the earth. Cloaked in the bread and the wine but truly present. Truly present because he is the Lord God, the great I am who comes to seek and to save and to keep you in that salvation. To keep you in that faith. Because he knows how difficult life is. He knows all of the ways that we begin to doubt and the troubles and the things that wear us down and wear on our heads. Yet he comes. Comes to seek and to save and keeps on coming. And keeps on coming because he's the God that wants more than anything else to have a relationship with you. The personal God that wants you to walk with him through your life through all of the problems and the troubles. That's who he is. We tend to forget. I certainly do. Things that I prayed about a year ago, I can't remember what they are, but you know what? If you write them down, and I would invite you to do this sometime, as you pray, write them down in a journal. Certainly pray, but write them down. And then a month from now, or even a year from now, go back. Go back and look and see the things that you prayed for, the problems and the struggles you were bringing before the Lord. You'll be surprised how many of them are not a problem anymore. They're taken care of, more than likely in the way that you didn't expect them to be, but they're taken care of. And if not, you know that he's been walking with you through them. Because he's the God who comes to seek and to save. There's a story of a young lady. She was struggling. She has several children, an ex-husband who doesn't really want to help or take care of her. 
struggling to make ends meet at Christmas time, struggling to get presents for her family. She was out, she was driving, she was on her cell phone. She's pulled over. Sheriff's Department. Officers get out, and what is she expecting? A ticket. Probably a pretty hefty one, great. More money that I don't have. Except this sheriff was Sheriff Chris Swanson. And this was a program called Santa's Helper, I believe it is. Genesee County Sheriff's Department was pulling people over that had minor infractions, but not to give them tickets, to give them a gift, because Sheriff Swanson is a man of God. He walked up and he talked to her and asked her what was going on and she unburdened her life, told her all the problems that's going on and the fact that she doesn't have money to buy her kids gifts, doesn't really have enough to fill the gas tank, it's not empty. He said, well, I've got something else for you besides a ticket. Here's a $250 gift card for Kroger. Make sure that you and your family have enough. And there's a gentleman here that's going to come up after me and he's going to talk to you and we're going to see what we can do about getting presents for your children. And he reached in his pocket, handed her $100 and said, put gas in this car. Know that you're loved. Know that we care about you. Sheriff Chris Swanson was standing in for the God who comes to seek and save. He worked through Chris Swanson to be the love of Jesus with skin on. And as believers in him, he asks us to do the same thing. Pray for people, come alongside people, help them as best we can. Make sure they know that our God is the great I am who's in control of all things, but more than anything, wants a personal relationship with them and a personal relationship with you. He is the God who comes to seek and to save. Came once in a manger, comes now through word and sacrament, and will come on the last day. Comes and provides for you and keep you in faith. Doesn't always take care of all your problems. But what is a problem? Know that he has not left you. He is there to walk with you, to be present with you, to make sure that you remain in faith towards him so that on the last day when he does return, you and I will stand before him on resurrection day and enter into eternal life where there will be none of these problems that that plague us. And all those loved ones that have gone on before us will be standing with us. My prayer for you, enjoy Christmas. Enjoy the gift that it is with family and friends and with food and with presents. But do this as part of that celebration. Come here on Christmas Eve and worship with us. Gather with the family of God where Christ is truly and really present with us and pours out his gifts of grace and abundance and over and over again. And not just you, bring your family, bring your friends. Doesn't matter if they don't come the rest of the year, bring them. Let them experience the presence of Christ as we experience it. Let Christ come into their lives and be with them so that they might know that he is the one true God who comes to seek and save me, you, and them. And not just once, but remains with you to keep you in steadfast faith to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to stand as you are able. As we have time on these Wednesday evenings, I like to go through and go through and study the catechism. So we're going to have tonight, as we continue on with the Apostles' Creed, catechetical instruction on the third article. So together we recite, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? 
I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. At this time, we remember our call as members of the church to be good stewards and to give offerings to God as we have discussed with Christ. But we don't pass the offering plate. We just simply ask those of you that want to give an offering, drop it in the box on the way out in the middle of the narthex there. Bring it in during the week, mail it in, or use our online giving portal. Let us now sing praise to God from whom all blessings flow. Congregation may be seated. I hope I, did I mention at the beginning of the service? Anyway, these middle weekday services, I like to come down and get prayer requests from you individually, in person. Those of you that sit way in the back and think I won't make it there, I can walk to the end of the sanctuary just fine. You're not hiding on me. Any prayer requests tonight that we can pray for for you or your loved ones or family or friends? Betty said my sermon reminded her of a play that they did at Redeemer. Are you going to accuse me of plagiarism? <laughs> God bless you and thank you for that. Zacchaeus has always been a favorite story of mine. My mom used to teach uh, Sunday school. I remember her teaching that lesson. It was fond memories for me. So God bless you and thank you for that. Any other prayer requests? We'll pray that God blesses the word. Not just my word, but in all churches. Thank you, sweetheart. God bless you. Other prayers? Yes. Thanksgiving for Tim making it right home today. Yes. Thanksgiving for Tim making it home. Tim and Barb's sister-in-law, down with COVID in Florida. All right, we will pray for her. Yes, ma'am. One for Tina. For Tina? Yes, who has come down with COVID. Okay. And two members of his family, I have a daughter and then his granddaughter who is in special ed. And then also for um, Terry. Sounds like COVID's hitting in the area, isn't it? So for, for Carrie, not our secretary, no. uh, but Carrie, your house cleaner who came down with COVID and her special needs child. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Bonnie has a doctor's appointment tomorrow about the pain that remains in her foot, and she's asking for strength from the Lord to accept what he finds. The Lord already knows the answer. The Lord already knows the answer, and he's preparing you for it, but that's a great thing to lift up in prayer. It's comforting to know that he's already there, right? Yes, sir. Does he have any doctor's appointments or anything coming up? Okay. All right. We'll talk after maybe. Can we do that? Okay. We will pray for Ken, for healing for him most definitely. Did you have something or are you just pointing out? No, I wanted to make the prayer list. Checking on me, huh? Good man. Other prayers? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew, our synodical president. For David, our district president. For Matt, our circuit visitor. For all pastors in Christ. For all servants of the church. And for all God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. For Joseph, our president. And for all public servants. For the government and those who protect us. That they might be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, for those who do good works in this congregation, for those who toil, for those who sing, for those who play instruments, and for all people here present who await the Lord's great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruit of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For thanksgiving on behalf of Carrie Onor for the good procedure she had today, that the Lord would continue to watch over her and bless her, let us pray to the Lord. For Larry Shubring, Tim Hill, Donna Zanotti, and Jackie Carter, who continue to recover at home after medical procedures, thanksgiving that all of those procedures went well, and for continued recovery, strengthening, and health, let us pray to the Lord. For Aiden, young nephew of Pastor Mark Schwartz, who's undergoing procedures in the hospital, that he and his parents would be strengthened and kept in faith, let us pray to the Lord. For God's word preached here and in all churches, that people's lives would be changed through the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit working in hearts and minds and drawn ever closer to Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For Tim and Barb's sister-in-law in Florida who has COVID, for Tina who has COVID, and for her daughter and granddaughter who's special needs, for Carrie, a house cleaner who has COVID and a special needs child, For all those among us who are suffering from COVID, that they would have complete restoration of health and have symptoms that are mild and manageable, let us pray to the Lord. For our dear sister Bonnie, as she has a doctor's appointment about the pain that remains in her foot, that she would be strengthened for whatever the answer might be. And Lord, since we can pray for anything, we, we pray that the answer would come, that she can and will be healed, and that pain will go away. In that faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And for our dear brother Ken, 
that doctors would be able to find out what's wrong and bring complete and lasting healing in his life and be with Linda and be with his family as they worry, that the calmness and peace of Christ would descend on all of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Our prayers now continue with some different responses. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I would invite you to stand as you are able. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your Holy Spirit is leading us and your hand is supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.